How to Read Guitar Music, Part A, Lesson 4 The Quaver Before we get started on Lesson 4, you may remember I left you some homework in Lesson 3. So, I'll play it through a couple of times, and then you can compare it with what you've been playing, or you can just play along with me if you want. And just to recap, the vast majority of the tune was in crotchets, and a crotchet was one beat. Right, here's the homework from Lesson 3, The Classical Study, at 90 beats per minute with a two-bar introduction. If you managed to play that exercise, well done. Because in honesty, when I wrote this exercise, I designed it to be difficult to stay with the rhythm. And that's so you don't just assume the next note, you have to pay attention to the music. So if you want to try it again, here it is again at 90 beats per minute.
And here it is again with a two bar introduction at 110 beats per minute. Right, let's do a very quick summary of all the notes we've learnt so far. And the first one we learnt was the semi-brief, and it had a value of 4 beats, and the rest had a value of 4 beats as well, and its value was 1. Then we did the minim, which lasts for 2 beats, and the rest likewise, and this had a value of 2. And then we did the crotchet, which lasts for one beat, and the rest the same. And this had a value of four. And today we'll be looking at the quaver, which lasts for half a beat, and the rest the same. And this has a value of eight. And whilst we're looking at their values, notice that the values double every time. So we started with 1, then 2, then 4, and then 8. And you'll remember the main place we use these at the moment is for the bottom number in the time signature. Right, lesson 4, the quaver. And the quaver can look a number of different ways, uh, more than any of the notes we've done so far anyway. And we have the usual thing where the tail can either go up or down and this tends to be more to do with its position on the stay than anything else so it doesn't affect the value but also with the quaver it looks different if it's on its own or if it's with a partner if you get two quavers together they'll be tied to one another by a line however if a quaver's on its own that line will just curl up and again, these both have the same values, so where you've got two, they're both half a beat, and when you've got one, it's still half a beat. So, you just have to be aware that a quaver can take both these forms. And the rest for a quaver is pretty easy to recognise, and it almost looks like a little seven. And as you'd expect, the rest for a quaver means half a beat of silence. If you find you have trouble counting the quavers, the trick is to put an AND between the beats, and the AND will naturally fall in the halfway point. So for example, I could count 1 AND 2 AND 3 AND 4 AND 1 AND 2 AND 3 AND 4 AND. And this will help you play the quavers in the correct place, and play them for the correct length of time. Exercise 1 Exercise 1 is playing chords as we've done in the past and the music is simplified so we haven't got all the notes from the chord in it 
but we've got enough to read the rhythm. And because the quaver is a little more difficult than some of the other rhythms we've done so far, I'm going to take a few chords out of this exercise and we'll just look at those on their own. And hopefully doing it that way, you'll get a better understanding of how to play the quaver. So we'll start with bar one. And in bar one, we're just playing a D chord. And we've got a crotchet, which lasts for a beat. Then two quavers, which is two half beats. And then it finishes with two more crotchets. Hopefully you've noticed that the tune's in 4-4 four, four time. So there's four crotchet beats per bar. So you can understand how I'm playing this bar. I'm going to play it very slowly and call out the beat numbers. So here it is. One and two and three and four and. And here that is again. One and two and three and four and. Let's just see if you can hear it without me putting the and in. One, two, three, four. And here that is again. One, two, three, four. Now, whichever you heard the most clearly, that's the way you should practice it. But don't feel forced to practice either way. Do whatever works best for yourself. Right, let's take a look at the fifth bar. And again, this is a D chord. However, the rhythm is slightly different. It's got a crotchet, two quavers, two more quavers, and finishing on a crotchet. And this is what it sounds like being counted with. One, and two, and three, and four, and. And again, one, and two, and three, and four, and. And here it is again without me putting the half beat marker. One, two, three, four. And again. One, two, three, four. At the moment, we're just learning how to read the rhythms. But with this kind of rhythm, it actually becomes easier to play faster because it becomes more natural. So I'll just play that rhythm faster and you'll see how it should sound and I'll play it without counting. Okay, let's take a look at the last line. And firstly, we'll look at the first bar of the last line, which sounds like this. One and two and three and four and and here's that again one and two and three and four and this time we'll go straight on to the next two bars and you'll notice what we've got here is two semi breathes but they're tied together and hopefully you'll remember from lesson 3a which hopefully you've seen is that the tie means those two notes join together and become one. So you strum that note once and let it hold for eight beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The last thing I need to point out in this tune, just in case you didn't notice it, is the fact that there's a repeat between the first bar and the end of the third line. So you play that whole section twice. Here's a couple of tips you might find useful. And the first one is that most electronic metronomes and apps have a half beat function on them. And you might find this useful whilst practicing, especially at the beginning. And the second tip is, when you're playing quavers, you might find it easier to play down, up, down strums. So, as with this exercise, if you've got a bar that's a crotchet, two quavers and two crotchets, you'd play it down, down, up, down, down. 
and if it repeated you'd do that over and over. At the slow speeds we're playing at now this isn't actually necessary and it can make it a bit awkward and it doesn't quite sound so good as you've probably heard with my previous demonstrations. However when you build up the speed the down up down strum not only becomes a necessity but it actually sounds better. Really to cover the plectrum directions properly it's going to take at least a full video and possibly even a short course so I'll do that in the future. Right here's exercise one at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here's exercise one again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here's exercise one again, but this time at 110 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Exercise 2. A Spanish study. Looking at this exercise, you'll notice there's nothing here we haven't already covered, but there's a couple of things I need to point out. The first thing is, watch out for the first four bars, 
they're inside a repeat so you play those twice the second thing which will help you learn the exercise more quickly really is that every alternate bar is identical so there's a short fairly fast partial scale run and that repeats right the way through the tune now this short scale run it can be quite quick so it's a really good exercise just to practice that by itself and use it as a speeding up exercise you'll see why i suggest this when you hear the exercise played at 110 beats per minute if you look down to the fifth bar the rhythm slightly changes there for the chords and you'll notice we've got a minim which is two beats and a crotchet which is a beat and then a quaver which is the half a beat and a half a beat rest so it's the full set there more or less at this stage of the course i recommend if you're confident enough to pause the video and go away and try this exercise a few times to see if you can work out the rhythm and then come back to see if you've got it right remember you can view the ebook for free on ebooksforguitar.com so you just need to have that on the screen whilst you're practicing this week we're doing things a little bit differently we'll do this exercise at 80 90 and 110 beats per minute so here it is at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction Here's exercise two again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And finally, here's that exercise again at 110 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Exercise 3 The first thing I need to point out about exercise 3 is that it's in the key of G major and this doesn't really affect you if you're reading the tab however if you look at the score you'll notice the music has a sharp symbol on the top line and that line is the F line and what that means is every time you get an F in this piece of music it's played as an F sharp and that basically is the key of G major 
The next thing we need to look at is the style of play. This tune you're allowed to let it ring throughout and what that means is you start the note at the correct rhythm point but you don't have to stop it, you can let it ring. And you can play this tune in two different ways. You can either play it with a plectrum or you can play it finger style. If you can play finger style that would be the style I'd suggest. Or if you want to learn to play finger style at the GCH Guitar Academy YouTube channel there's a playlist there with a full course on finger picking style and once you've done that course this should be relatively easy. As with the previous tune if you feel confident enough or you just want to you could try pausing the video here go away and try and work out this exercise and then come back when you think you've got it and compare it with what I play and see if you've got it right. But beware and look at the music carefully because there's some crotchets hiding away at the end of some of the bars and you'll remember a crotchet is one beat whereas the quavers are half a beat. I'm going to play this exercise a little differently. I'm going to play it twice at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. The first time I'll play finger style and the second time I'll play with the plectrum. And then I'll do the same thing again at 90 beats per minute. This is plectrum style at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. This is finger style at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And finally, this is plectrum style at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Exercise 4. Rock study. Ideally I'd have liked to have kept this exercise as homework. However there's so much in it that really needs to be explained that I've decided to cover it in this video. Also this exercise is quite hard. So if you find it too difficult don't worry about it. Try and get what you can out of the tutorial 
and then concentrate on the other exercises. The first thing I need to point out about this exercise to help you play it correctly is the fact that all the chords are one shape and that's a barred fifth chord shape and this is sometimes called a power chord. Now if you've never come across these it would be well worth you pausing the video here and looking in the description I've got a tutorial on how to play the power chord and it goes into some depth. However, if you have seen a power chord before, and you can already play one, then you know what to expect. The second thing I'd like to point out, which is more of a thing of interest than a technical thing, and that is these bass notes. And when you get repeating bass notes like this, they're called pedal notes. And this name was first believed to have been coined by Bach. If you've ever seen a large organ, or a church or theatre organ, you'll notice they've got bass pedals. And because you're playing the bass with your feet, the bass line tends to be fairly simple as a general rule. And this is where the term comes from. So, in this tutorial, when I refer to the pedal notes, you'll know I'm referring to the bass line. And this obviously applies to other people's tutorials, and to any commentary on music. Right, here's the first four bars, very slowly, concentrating on my chord hand, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'll be playing this exercise using an electric guitar, just because it seems more appropriate. However, you can still play it on an acoustic guitar. And for anyone who's been questioning, this course, and what you're learning in it, is essential for both acoustic guitarists and electric guitarists. Hopefully you could see there, even though I was moving the chord around, it was the same chord shape I was maintaining. Now, initially, you might find it really hard to maintain that chord shape, and most of my students do at first. So, don't worry about that. Even though I make it look easy, it's because I've been playing for over 40 years. So, if when you lift the chord, your fingers go everywhere, don't worry, eventually you'll get the hang of it and you'll be able to hold the chord shape. And probably surprisingly quickly. Hopefully, you will have noticed that even when I was playing pedal notes on the open strings, I was keeping a partial chord shape, so I could get to the chord more quickly when I needed to. And really, this is the point of maintaining the chord shape. Eventually, you'll be able to move between positions very quickly. And when you need to play another note outside the chord, if possible, try to keep the chord shape, even if you're not playing it. Right, now I'll play the first three lines down to the repeat, because after the repeat the rhythm changes slightly. And I'm going to play this at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here's that first section again, at 80 beats per minute, with a two bar introduction. Right, let's have a look at the section between the first repeat and the second repeat. And you'll notice 
the rhythm changes very slightly in that at the end of all the bars except one there's a crotchet which means you hold the note slightly rather than continuing with the relentless beat that we had in the previous section. With this section of the tune you can also hold the fifth chord shape throughout it. So here's that section played between bar 9 and 16 at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here's that section again at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Right, I'll play the last section from the last repeat to the end of the exercise. And this doesn't take any explanation because you've already covered the techniques in the previous two sections. So here it is at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here it is again at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Right, I'll play the whole exercise now, however I won't include the repeats so it's easier to follow. Here's exercise 4 without repeats at 80 beats per minute with a 2 bar introduction. And here's exercise 4 again, right the way through, without repeats, but this time it's going to be accompanied by a drum beat. I'll put a few minutes of the drums at the end of the video so you can have a go with it yourself. However, it's not as easy as you think. If you've never played with drums before, it might take you a few minutes to adapt. 
So for the time being, I'll count you in so you can hear where the beats fall. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And here it is again, with the drum beats and a counting. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Because I'm going to have drum beats going at the end of this video, I'll do my sign off now. If you're new to my tutorials, this is part of an entire course that you can find on my channel in the playlists. Alternatively, you can find it at ebooksforguitar.com and it's in the course that's called Reading Music. And you can view the PDFs there online for free. As usual, thank you very much for watching, it's much appreciated, and please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon, and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And bye for now, until the next lesson.